So finally, in like the summer of 2012, we get to see Windows have native support for USB 3.0. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, and Linux has had it standard since October of 2009. Well, that task manager is using 5.5 meg. Look, it's using 26% of memory. It's using about 500 and some odd megabytes of memory. Which actually, for a really new version of Windows, ain't bad. I mean, for what it's doing, I mean, of a Microsoft product, that, that's not bad for Microsoft's track record. Um, you look at performance. You're looking at processes right now, but look at performance. And, oh yeah, so you get to see the uh, system information. Wow, it's got 492 threads handling, but the CPU itself only does one thread at a time, so it has to switch all the time. Peak OS? Yeah. Um, so, y you want to see how to do some more stuff? Try. You mean, you don't automatically know how to use this? I mean, I mean it's Windows, right? Isn't it supposed to be super easy? It's supposed to be, but... That's what they tell us, right? How the fuck do I access my goddamn program? Um, so, like, how long have you been using Linux? Let's well, say, well, more like a year. Has it been a full year? Probably, or a little bit under a year. Yeah, wasn't it like last fall when I installed the point it? I've been using it less than I had Windows, and already. I mean, you've been using. Yeah, yeah, for, for your whole lifetime, right? Yeah, you've only been using Linux for less than a year. And you're you're huh. proficient enough to. No, I don't. Oh my fucking god, dick news. You got all the way to the corner. So you stay out of the cat. You stay out of the cat bowl. Hey, you, you stay out of the cat bowl. Yeah, and see, every new version of Windows, they change the user interface, especially every other version of Windows. So you basically have to relearn your computer, don't you? Pretty much. And supposedly this is easier than Linux, where every version you can choose which graphical user interface you have, and then the graphical user interfaces don't change very much. So basically, and, and the menus are so elegantly organized in Linux, right? Yeah, much more than this. And Linux is free. Where the fuck is goddamn Microsoft Paint? I, you know, I don't know if it's in there. I'll tell you what, go back to the file manager, or the Windows Explorer, it's right there on the panel. And if it wasn't for me being familiar with Linux for over four or five years, then I wouldn't have even... And just search in it for a computer or whatever. It's usually in... Uh, okay, go to the hard drive. It's usually... I'll just put in paint, because that's, that's just what they would call it. Well. Um, here, you go to computer, you go in and browse. Okay, you'll be in Windows. Um... It used to just be down all in here. But, uh, I don't know if it's in the system. There's the DLLs. I don't know if it'd be in system 32. Just to access paint, like you used to always be able to do, right? Mm hmm. I think if you delete system 32, it'll make it go faster. <laughs> That wishful thinking. Because after all, less stuff on the hard drive makes it go faster. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, they brag about a new defragger or something like that. And okay. like, and the thing is, with, um, with um, Linux, you don't even do defragging. Because, like, the, it's automatic, fragmentation is automatically managed within the ext3 and ext4 file systems that come standard on every Linux distro. And, uh... Alright, use your super easy Windows operating system. Yeah, right. Now, don't you know Windows is easier than Linux? It's right here. 
not true though. I don't know, dude. How many people? I mean, like percentage fraction. What? I mean, how many people do you see getting mad at Windows at Microsoft for how hard Windows 8 is to pick up on? I don't know. I haven't seen anyone deal with 8, but everyone gets mad at Windows in general. But they just uh, end up reusing. No, I mean, when they when when this first hits the market, what do you think people's reaction is going to be? Probably the same with all the others. They'll be mad when it doesn't work right, but they won't know why it doesn't work right. Well, I think they're going to be madder at Windows 8 because it's, I mean, it's way different. It's like probably one of the single most radical changes in window in the Windows operating system for a long time. I mean, like, I mean, because you know how, like, People are like, why not? I mean, even like something as easy to use as XP or Windows 98 in comparison to Windows 8, you know, or Windows 95. Remember how people act like they didn't know how to, I mean, they're like, well, I don't know how to, mur, mur, mur. I need to have a, a, a tutorial tell me how to open up Defrag. I mean, you've seen that, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so how hard do you think it is going to be for those average Windows users to use Windows 8? Those old people. Not just old people. I mean, look, I'm 32 and I had a hard enough time, but it, it was I like, like, but I was able to catch on a little bit because I'm familiar with a varying degree of different user interfaces anyway, just because I use Linux all the time. Oh, well, that's a good market. Yeah, but like my mom had a hard enough time with XP or whatever. I mean, and and seven, but like, I mean, really, how predict? How hard do you predict this is going to be to use for the people who are, let's say, familiar with like Windows XP? You think they'll be pulling out their hair? And then this will come on all the new computers. Yep. We'll and see uh, what they've been doing. Dude, I mean, like, you know how many people... As far as most people know, there's no such thing as anything besides Windows. Yeah, because that's all they know. The superficial, shallow world. But, like, um... I mean... I mean, you see how many people got frustrated at Windows Vista. Mm -hmm. And Microsoft, here in the last few years, has went from... Went, they went from 95% market share to now it's roughly 85%. Uh -oh. I think they could lose a good 5% market share over Windows 8. Because, see, Microsoft, they force you on this user interface to only use their style. And it's so difficult to use, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, it's not like Be Linux cool. where you actually got a variety of choices. Um... Who's Beaker? Who's Beaker? He's a piggy. Alright, Dylan, can I get just some quick video of you using uh, uh, Linux Mint 13 real quick? No. Because it's installed on this same machine. Yeah. Which is the newest version of Linux that just hey, came let, out a few weeks ago. just fix it. Oh, look at that! Look, see? Even Cat can't use it. Yeah. Okay, do you know how to actually shut down on this or restart? I doubt it. Let's see. Good. No. We'll turn this a bit. Wait. You go up. Yeah, look at the those options. See your settings. Uh, you, no, you don't need to get in there. No, you don't need to get in there. Oh, that was surprisingly... Really fucking stupid. Look after how many goddamn years of it being down in this corner. Now it's over there. It's fucking All right. stupid. Now it's restarting. Now select <coughs> Linux Mint 13, which is the newest version of uh, Linux Mint that just came out. Is this yours, Zoggle? No, it's not mine. We're, 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 I, no, I don't know. Alright, get ready to boot it. Yeah, whatever. We didn't know about Beaks. Is the first option? Yeah, it's first option. Linux Mint, uh, 13 using Rock the cinnamon uh, user interface on the same computer. Now you keep out of there, you keep out of there, don't touch it. Don't touch the cat food. Hey, no, no. No, piggy. No. 
don't get in there. It's not for you to get into. Low fleeing hybrid. I want to switch sides. All right, there we are. Use the uh, N A U G L E, and I'll type in my password. Now load. Beak, 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 beak. And this cinnamon interface is like I don't know a few months old. They I think they put it out in like late 2011, and it's less than a year old. And it's actually a variant or an answer to the GNOME 3 uh, shell. Oh, look, it automa look at this. Wireless network's available. It automatically detected my Wi-Fi chipset and automatically configured it. Every piece of hardware in this laptop computer automatically works in Linux Mint. Oh, that's not what you use. There's your menu there. And you type in the name of the program you're looking for right there, and it's so simple to use. You stay out of there, piggers. Yeah, and this is a paint program. You can do image editing. It's actually professional grade. Hey, you stay out of there. <laughs> I'll see you over there. This one here has got roughly the same learning curve as uh, Adobe Photoshop because it's like that type of a program. Oh, uh, drag your mouse up to the extreme uh, left corner. Yep, and there's your task switcher. Yeah, and you can drag programs to it and all kind of stuff. Okay, this is the newest version of Linux Mint, and it, okay, this is not your first time using it. You've used it like last week at my apartment. But what do you think about Linux Mint 13 with the Cinnamon user interface that's, you know, right here? What's box better? Yeah, I know you like Fluxbox, and I know you like the way the Linux Mint community sets up Fluxbox, but I'm saying, like, in comparison, I like Cinnamon. I like it a lot. What do you think of this uh, Linux Mint 13 using Cinnamon in comparison to Windows 8? Better, better. Yeah, you got yourself into there. You need to get yourself out of there. Why don't you help him? Yes, I will help him. I was going to help him. What, you think I was just going to leave him there? Well, I said you were. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, that's the teaching I can get in places. Oh, fussy. And this here just means that it's got updates that it's can be installed. So the newest Linux against the newest Windows. Let go of the cat hair. Let go of the cat hair. Should have never got on it in the first place. So you find Linux a lot easier to use? Mm -hmm. You actually found the menu of the programs? <coughs> oh, this is easy to use if you actually know how. Go into File. This isn't easy to use. <coughs> what you about? You gotta go into File. And you go to New. Motherfuck. You set your yeah, size. Exactly. Now you gotta... as easy as that. It took me a while to use GIMP also, just like Photoshop and all the others. It's it's basically about the same learning curve. I do, I do. Oh, it's ready for you to use. Wait, you gotta select a color. Okay. How's color at? 
I'll close that window. No, not that. And you, there's colors right there. Where the black where the black box is right there. Should be black. Or maybe you gotta go for the white one. Or just depends on right click or use use Yeah, there you go. You select a couple. It just it's a learning curve. It's just like Adobe Photoshop. Well, anyway. Click to paint. Control to pick the color or it, it it took me a while to figure out how to use GIMP also. Once you know it, it's not hard. It's just, it's it's a professional grade program, and all professional grade programs, at least most of them, have a, a steep learning curve. There might be a simpler paint program in there. You go back in the menu. And, uh, accessories, pro well, yeah, graphics. Um, go into Office. No. Yeah, yeah LibreOffice Draw, yeah. I don't know. I haven't used this before, but uh, it's probably like that. There is a simple paint program. Like, there's Tux Paint, which is basically like Microsoft Paint. Hey, peek! Peek! I haven't installed any software on this yet, so I mean I can get there's MT Paint which you can get use which is pretty much like Microsoft Paint. And then there's Tux Paint and there's some other programs that are easy. Beep. Yeah. Alright, stink beep. What are you doing? Beep. Beep. And the shutdown beep. process is really easy. Beep. Beak. 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 